on, sweetie. You can come down. Come on. Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Loreen, and the little meow and the little cat is Missy. She's at the top of the stairs, and I've got all these books out, and she does not like her pathways to be blocked, so she's she's a little angry. I don't know whether she'll come down. Uh, she might just go and sleep on the end of the bed. She's not a very visible cat. We were just talking about that the other day, about how, you know, she's a nice cat when she's awake, but she's asleep for probably 22 out of 24 hours, it seems. Um, okay, so how do you do? I'm talking to you about books, and the main book that I have to speak to you about is uh, The Marvels by Brian Selznick. And this one, you know, like, look how big it is, but, but the first 300 pages are all drawing. Now, he's used a really gray palette, and I guess I'm going to assume pencil just because of the number of grays and the scratch marks and uh, the line work, but I probably what's happened is there's been Photoshop that comes in in the meantime, and we have got just an amazing array, array of like they're not illustrations really are they they're, they're just they're more they're beyond illustrations that you can imagine um, you could imagine these on your wall in a frame even though they're for children's book um, <laughs> there there there's a child even though it's for a children's book um, they're just so beautifully done. So what we have got here is a story that begins with um, 1766 is the opening page, and we are on board a ship. And on board the ship called the Kraken, we have got the beginnings of a tragic story. And there is a young girl tied to a mast, and you can see the wind is starting to blow. And uh, so we see an angel come down, and we see um, a storm building and a shipwreck. And then, um, you know, some characters in the story survive and some don't. And there's a rescue, but uh, where does the rescued orphan go? And um, they end up in the theater. I don't know if I showed you that picture. Um, where they begin to have a new life as a uh, an actor and just just sort of a theater handyman, let's you, let's say, but also picking up some of the roles. And the book takes us through uh, the life of this orphan boy who then becomes a parent, and so we start to see the generations and how they are connected to this theater. Not everybody in the story becomes an actor. Some of them, um, I think one of them is an artist. And so we see how this story um, kind of plays out until, come on, come on, till all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, I'm sorry, but until we get a very nice ending, but it's a cliffhanger ending um, because we can, well, I, if it's cliffhanger, I can't tell you. <laughs> there she went. Um, I can't tell you what the cliffhanger was, but at the end of the cliffhanger, we turn to a completely, completely white page, and we then discover that we are in 1990. So that took um, 392 pages for us to arrive there. I, I was reading at bedtime because I thought, oh, this is going to make a good, you know, bedtime book on the bedside table because being so big I'll just I'll just work through it well I was through the first 390 pages in I don't know half an hour or something like that and it what it what it does unlike a graphic novel is that it is much smoother there's very little te text if the text is there it's like a, the sign of a building or it's a, a grave marker so you don't have to um, with graphic novels I find you've got to read the, the text while you're reading the drawings, while you're reading the setting, and so there's a whole lot of different kinds of inputs that are going on, whereas with this one, you, you're just reading the, the painting or the drawing, and you're having to come to your own conclusions. 
So we then switched to text in 1990, 1990, and we've got Joseph who has run away from school. He has been sent to a British boarding school by his parents who, uh, one of them's American and one of them is British, and they are off, they're just not really parenting, they're just traveling. And uh, Joseph at the age of oh, 11, 12 has already been to Saudi Arabia and Dubai and all, all places where his dad has been sent as, um, to do with banking. So he and his parents are not really connected in any way. So he runs away to his uncle's in London. And his uncle lives in a very peculiar house and is, I wouldn't say he's agoraphobic, but he's certainly very protective of the contents of his home. And Joseph wants his uncle, Albert, to like tell him what's going on here? What's with this house and where's my, he seems to connect to family members and so he wants to know what, what's my family all about. So this story of Joseph and his uncle is, is really quite tense and the uncle is very reluctant and Joseph is fairly persistent and there's a, a young um, neighbor girl called Frankie and a little dog that keeps burst, bursting into the scenes and uh, as we get towards the end of the story, Uncle Albert is beginning to share more. Um, Joseph has got the wrong end of several sticks. <laughs> Frankie is just, well, she's a kind of character that's there in order to help build the tension because she's the one who's, who's always stirring the pot in, in a good way, but just she's the one that you know, drives the action. And come on, do this, come on, do that. And then the dog, as I say, just kind of bursts upon scene upon scene and creates absolute mayhem which uh, leaves everybody kind of reeling um so we get a very nice conclusion um not everybody's needs are met which is also nice and we have got um at the tail end of the story we have got a return to the illustrations and what happens is that the new artist, the 1990, 1990 artist, has, is able to sort of pick up the intention of the earlier artist. So we've got this beautiful renderings throughout the whole book. And one of the things I loved about this book is because it is done in pencil, there's, although there's a fair amount of um, tension and anxiety and emotional distress, from the mystery of not knowing certain things. There's a softness to it, there's a kindness to it. So even the most uh, sort of dreadful thing with a boat, for instance, the ship is sinking, it's just it's just so lovingly drawn that I, I don't know. If you're gonna feel happy about <laughs> drowning on a, sh a ship, you can go, whoa, it was a beautiful wave. <laughs> so. Brian Selznick is a, an author who has written um, The Invention of Hugo uh, Cabret, which I did read, and I don't remember when that was written. That's probably, I'm gonna say that's 10 years ago. And that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a well, rock your, rock the book world book, because uh, some people, couldn't stand that it was entirely drawn, that there wasn't any text. I mean, they opened a book and they wanted the normal format. And then there were other people who were just, well, this is so beautifully drawn, what a wonderful way to tell a story. And then there were people who, who kind of overlooked both the text issue and the drawing issue and like went for the plot. It wasn't the best plot. There was some, there were some quirks, but I mean, when you think about it was at least this big and it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was all drawn. Um, so that meant that book was, uh, the, the author, Brian Selznick, didn't, I don't know whether he spent time writing it and was able to sort of do editing in text or, and then out of the text create their story or, you know, I have no idea how that story arose, whether whether they just had pictographs across the way. And so if you've invested that much time into these, and you imagine that he's drawing, he must be drawing on fairly large sizes of paper in order to not get everything pixelated up. So uh, when you think about that, you um, it's very hard to edit 
a drawing sequence. So I, I have got a comic that I wrote. It's like, it's, it's old business now, but when I had my storyboards, it, it, you, once you got into the final drawings of things, if you realized then that you had a, a storyline problem that you'd mixed, you'd missed some detail that was part of telling the story, you have to draw probably two or three of the little squares all over again in order to get continuity. And so, I mean, imagine that in the Hugo book, continuity in the plot might have been a little bit hard to achieve. Now, the other book that he wrote, which I'm going to go back and find, is Wonderstruck. And, um, okay, I'm pretty sure that the first one, Hugo Cabret, was a Newbery winner. But it really, it caused quite a furore at the time. And I'm trying to think, what now I don't know very much about graphic novels, but I'm trying to remember, and I think the Hugo Cabret book came out just as graphic novels are starting to lift off. And so there was some tension there around the graphic novel format and his format. So, um, you know, he's really been walking a path of his own. I think it's absolutely beautiful and delicious. And um, I will go out and find Wonderstruck and find out whether he's used the same method or whether he's branched into text because in terms of the text, this is a really tight story. I really enjoyed it. I felt that the tension was right. The, um, the depiction of the two kids um, was really, they were very authentic. 11, 12 years old. Okay, so I think this is one of those books that meets all ages. My husband, who you might have seen in the last video, he doesn't love this particular, um, he doesn't love this particular style of book, but he does read an awful lot of graphic novels, and a lot of them are uh, not just comic book version. I'm, I'm thinking of the book Ducks that um, won some prizes last year, and that took her years to, to write um, and draw. So I I think, where am I going with that? I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> so I think what I'm trying to say is that this is a book for all ages. If, you've, if you're someone who's interested in a depiction of story through picture, then I think this is really worth taking the time and, and peeking at because it is a different method and um, quite a different um, energy as well. A lot of the graphic novels are high adventure, high impact, or they're historical, so they're a lot calmer, but they're a lot more um, the detailed in order to get the historical facts correct. Or um, some of them are situations like refugees, and so you get a whole bunch of different kinds of inputs that are uh, um, you know, um, tragic or, or sad, or so you can get a bit more energy by joining the text and the picture. So this, this doesn't rely on that. Oh boy. <laughs> Did I just cut my throat there? Anyhow, I think this is a book for all ages. It's geared to the readership of middle readers, but as I say, the artwork is just so gorgeous. I don't know how anyone could turn it down. Um, I think that's all I'm going to talk about today with respect to books. I wanted to thank you. Last week's video received way more comments than um, usual. And I, from what I understand, somehow the algorithm um, just was in my favor. I don't know what happened, technically. And so thank you for uh, more viewers than usual. It was like, I think it was over 200 views. Like, whoa! Um, so let's just hope the momentum keeps going because that's just so much fun. And uh, next week, what I'm going to talk to you about, just because I know you're all going to be on pins and needles, is uh, I have to figure out my pile to take to the camp, which generally causes a fair amount of anxiety. <laughs> well, not as much as when we went camping because uh, on that road trip, because we were only allowed one or two books each. So in this one, um, because it's, because we're, we come back in and out to the house. I don't have to take all those books with me. But that's, that's my selection, plus whatever I find at the library. So I will talk to you next week. I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.